Hi guys. Uh, I hope you are well and preparing yourself for your work. Okay. So on this lesson, I'm going to teach you mathematics. Interestingly, the mathematics of your brain. How does your brain store information? You know, the study of memory, that is what we are doing. In psychology, they study about memory when they do cognitive psychology. So in cognitive psychology, they study about in cognition, they study about one problem solving is that not mathematical well i think it is number two they study about logic don't you think it's mathematical mathematics teaches us logic number three they talk about memory right now i'm going to teach you about memory you know your computers, you often see this thing written RAM, eh? random access memory. That is a short term memory of your computer. Even in your phone, your cell phone or a tablet, you see recent calls, recent files. What's that? Short term memory. That's mathematics. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to show you how not to forget. Do you like that? I mean, it's nice how not to forget, you know, so that you can remember everything. All the information that you store in your head, you must be able to retrieve it. As much as you can retrieve the file in a computer, your friend's number in your phone. You must be able to retrieve files in your brain. Okay. So, memory is divided into two. Two parts. Not a lot. Two. There is a short-term memory and there is a long-term memory. How do these things work? Short term memory, there are specific things that you do in order to access your short term memory. Also, there are specific things that you need to do to access your long term memory. In a short term memory, well, you will forget within a short term period. But you store in a long term memory, it will take very, very long time for you to forget. You'll always remember that. But there are ways and means which we are going to which I'm going to show you how not to forget. And when you've stored information in long-term memory, how do you ensure that whenever you need that file, you can retrieve it as soon as possible? So the brain works in stacks. You know, you can imagine stacking things. Most of the information that you need must not must not be right at the bottom of the stack. It must be, you know, on the upper part. You must access it quickly. Right. Now, I'm going to show you memory. So we're talking about 
memory uh, my pen is writing but don't like this don't like this okay let me try again memory 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 enables us to remember okay so we have two types of memories two types we have short term And we have long term. Okay. These are memories. Okay. Let me write here memory. memory one and memory two remember what I said there are things that you need to do to access memory one or memory two I like to call them m1 and m2 you know we study mathematics and uh, we have got into the habit of simplifying things because the work of mathematics is to simplify so now what do I need to do in order to be able to access memory one short-term memory you can imagine short-term memory as the random access memory so here you need to do two things what are those things you pay attention Pay attention you pay attention okay that's the first thing number two you recognize what you do recognize
you recognize you recognize what you do pay attention and recognize if you don't pay attention it means you don't recognize what you do so here you can't recognize and not pay attention or you cannot pay attention and not recognize you can't do one of these two things we're still going to learn about certain things when we do uh, other topics of mathematics i'm still going to teach you probability by the way and we're going to talk about events paying attention and to recognize you have to do those things simultaneously simultaneously okay now as i am teaching you if you pay attention you focus you recognize what you do you take it serious you will understand each and every point i'm trying to make you will understand everything that i'm explaining to you you do these two things paying attention and recognize what you do those things they enter your short term memory memory one Most of the time, you know, you find that you listen to a person talking because you've got ears, of course, you can hear what he's saying. And you can think about what he was saying, but you find that uh, three days down the line, oh, you've forgotten. It means that information was stored in a short term memory. But what do you do if you want this information to be stored in a long-term memory? What do you do? These are the steps you need to follow. Okay? There are steps that you need to follow. So, Okay. If you do these three things, you will not forget. Believe me. <laughs> All right. So, the first thing that you do, you have to order, create an order. You have to create an order. You have to create an order. What do I mean by ordering? Arranging your information properly. How do you arrange your information properly? You do your own notes. You file them well. They follow each other in an orderly pattern. In that way, you have organized it. So what do you do? The first thing, you organize. You organize. Or you, you, you arrange things in order. Organize or you arrange in order. Okay. Should I write arrange in order? Arrange.
Okay, you arrange in order. You organize. That's the first thing you do. Number two, you know, with your work, we're studying mathematics. You have to create meaning in what you do. It must be meaningful. So, create Create meaning. You create meaning. Let me write my C properly. It does not look nice. It looks like Yeah. Right. Create meaning. This thing, it means things that you work with, your mathematics must be meaningful. You must understand. You must have a very good understanding and be able to make practical examples. That's meaningful. I was talking about a distributive property. You know. So it means I can make examples to create meaning out of it. For instance, you talk about a, a distributive property. In a distributive property, we take a number that is outside the bracket and multiply the sum of the two numbers inside the bracket. You distribute this number outside the bracket into each and every one inside the bracket. That is a distribution. Now when we talk about distributive property in mathematics, that is exactly what we are talking about. It's like having a bag of oranges and distributing them to children. Distributive property. It creates meaning. There is a secret key. A secret key. What is it? that will make your file not to be buried deep down in your stack of files. You need to be able to retrieve it anytime you want it. Remember in your examination, you only have a limited time. You must retrieve everything. Most of you, just after you finish writing your exam, you move, you walk out of that exam room. Once you are outside of the door, you say, oh, damn, I just remembered the answer. Why? You thought about it, you couldn't retrieve, but then your brain brings back the file. But time is over. Shaila time. You can't go back. The invigilator will not allow you. So in that way you have lost, you've lost max. So how do you make sure that the file is not buried deep in the stack? Well, let me write this. Rehearsal. 
I did not want to write repeat. Well, you have to repeat it. Rehearsal. You see musicians, people who do music, and people, you know, who do stage plays, your movies, you know, they do exactly the same thing. That is why you see them not reading any script. The script is in their head. The first thing that they do, they pay attention to their work. After paying atten while paying attention, they recognize what they do, what it is, how important it is. They learn. They learn their scripts. They learn their roles. Musicians learn their music. Learn the music. Okay. After that, you know, they organize this information properly in their head. For instance, in music, they don't mix up the verses. They make sure that they follow each other accordingly. And they can create meaning out of it. They can actually see it. And most of them, you'll see, maybe the actors, you'll see their facial expressions about what they do. Because they've created meaning. It's alive in them. Even musicians sometimes, you see in their faces when they sing, they express different moods. Depending on the song, nature of the song. But most importantly, they rehearse all the time. They rehearse because rehearsal makes them perfect. Remember that. Don't think that you will pass by revising ex previous examination papers. Forget it. Previous examination papers will never help you. You have to know your work. Once you know your work, you can answer any question paper. Most students, they believe that Answering previous question papers help. It does not help at all. There is a need to do your previous question papers. Maybe, you know, you want to train yourself with respect to time so that you finish in time. Well, that is understandable. But don't do previous question papers and think that you'll pass. I've seen many people. And in fact, there is no scientific theory that supports that a person who uses previous examination papers will pass. But there is sufficient evidence that, which is scientific, of course, that when you do your work in this way, definitely you will succeed, you will pass. So, you must make sure, guys, not to be fooled. Make sure you know your work. Make sure you do your work. And you follow the steps that I've given you. I also want to tell you something tricky about education. Education is all about knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge drives innovation and is the driver of inventions. So knowledge is something that is very important. And knowledge has got its building blocks. 
Knowledge has got three things. I'll show you. There are three bending blocks of knowledge. Three. Like in physics, we study about an atom. An atom is a building block of matter. So everything has got its building block. All right. Number one, we talk about a concept. A concept. This is very crucial. A concept. Concept is the core of education. Without concept, there is no education. Let us do this experiment. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, by definition, is the process whereby plant make their own food using sunlight. Well, let us not mention using what and what. I just want to show you something specific. Photosynthesis is a process whereby plant make their own food. We stop right there. Photo means light. Synthesis means processing. Okay. Now you have this new word, light processing. It's got no meaning, you know. When a person asks you what is light processing, what would you say? You won't have an answer. You won't even think about photosynthesis. Why? Photosynthesis is a concept. So what is a concept? You see, when words follow each other, Their meaning separately tend to differ from a joint meaning when these words are put together. And that is what we call a concept. You may have light and you can define light. Light is illumination. And you may define process is to make. But illumination, you know, so it, it does not really gives you this photosynthesis thing. So it's important. The reason why most of the learners have a problem is not because really the subject matter is difficult. No, not really. It's, it's not really related to that. But it's related to the poor understanding of the concept. It's important to understand the concept. Number two. Knowledge uses logic. It uses logic. And logic is part of the elements that you find in cognition. Cognition talks about three things. One, logic. Two, problem solving. Three, memory. So logic, it's a way of ordering things. It's an arrangement an arrangement that makes sense. Education teaches us to be sensible, to be able to think. And mathematics teaches us logic. So knowledge has, a, has its building block concept and logic. 
Thirdly, there is general consensus. Consensus. There's general consensus. I want uh, I want to use a simple word, declarative. Declarative property. Yeah, that's the word I want. Declarative. 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 Okay. These three things, make sure you get them right. If you don't understand this, there's nothing that you'll be able to follow. You'll forever have a problem. So you must make sure. And also you're thinking, guys, the way you think. The way you think. A human being has got three major things. We use Cognition, we use logic, we use intuition. So all this forms part of using your brain. If you are able to use your brain, you will succeed. The most important thing is to be able to use your brain. Hey guys. I was just giving you this special lesson to help you in order to use your brain. You must be able to use your brain. Our brains have got multiple functions. We've got so much capabilities there's many things that we can do with our brains and we are only using a small part of it so you must try and make use of your brain as much as possible if you can remember a two hour movie why not remember a two hour lesson if you can remember you guys you know you rap I know you, you, all these youngsters you know they like to sing and you know so many songs off by heart. Why can't you remember your schoolwork in the same way? You must have good attitude towards your work. Guys, please subscribe to my page. Like my page. Ciao.